Yo, what is up, guys? It's Great Penguin Gamer here, and welcome back to the second Roblox beginner scripting tutorial. And in today's video, I'll be looking to a thing called properties. Okay, ah! So properties are the thing that make up an object in the Explorer. And if you don't know what the Explorer is, the Explorer is where all the stuff, all the services are. So the base plate is in the workspace, and the workspace is in the Explorer. Well, the workspace is actually in the game, but this lists all the stuff that the Explorer has. And I don't even, I don't know if the game is going to explore, but yeah, I don't really know. It just lists the services, yeah. I'll get into that in a later episode. But properties, so say, let's click on the part thing, which creates a new part. And you have all these properties on the right. So if you don't see the properties, go to explore, to the view and click on properties. If you don't see explorer, just click on explorer too. Oh, accidentally unclicked it. And the properties are what make up the part. Yeah, like I said, it just makes up the object in the workspace. And the part is in the workspace, which is in the Explorer. So, yeah, all enough of that shot. And it, you can customize the appearance. So, basically, you can make it, like, black, metal. You can, you can make it a bunch of stuff. Like, there's, a lots, of, there's lots of stuff you can add. And today, I'm going to be showing you how to make your first line of code. And don't be nervous, everyone. It would, it's really easy to make your first line of code. So if you have any trouble with the code, I'll be happy to help. Like, I'm experienced with properties. Well, not really, but I have a clear knowledge of what properties are. So if you want to add a, if you want to start scripting in, in, for the part, you go to the part, and then you add an, and then there will be a list of objects, and you, you click on the script object. And there's two ways to change the property of a part and the way that I mostly do it is script dot parent parent and dot transparency it equals to zero okay so now let's go and test it out you know I actually actually have to set it to zero point five so we actually see the change and yep we spawn in and once we're in there, we can see what it's done. And yep, now you see a half transparent, half opaque part. And and there is another way to do it, but I wouldn't really do it if you like have a bunch of if you have a model and you want to edit something like deep inside the model. But here's the other way to do it. So game dot workspace dot part uh, part dot transparency equal to zero point five. So this is the same thing basically. So what it's doing is referencing the game, which is the game itself, and then the workspace, and then the part, which is this thing, and this transparency, which is the property, and setting it to 0 0.5. And this is the same thing. This is referencing the, referencing the script, which is the script itself. It's referencing itself. And the parent is what the object is inside of. So the script is inside of the part, and the part is inside of the workspace. You know what I'm getting into. And then I and then I list the property. And if you want to separate the script dot parent and dot transparency stuff with a dot, so it's referencing different stuff. And and then you add an equal sign and zero point five. So it's on a scale from zero to one. So if it's zero, it's opaque, and if it's one, it's totally transparent. So let, I'm just going to write down some properties. Oh, by the way, about the script dot parent and game dot workspace thing, you could do it however you want. How, although I like to do the script dot parent method, you could do it the game dot workspace way. I don't really care. It's how your brains work. So, anyways, I'm just gonna list down some properties that we're gonna review today. I mean, in this video. Okay, so we now we have all these properties, and I I listed one of each property. And the kinds of values is you it uses. So here we have transparency. We already talked about that. And color, we use a value called color three dot nil. So color three, it depends on the RGB thing. So if you don't know RGB, you better like search it up or something like that. But color, but RGB. So the the first value is red. The second value is green, and the third value is blue. It's on a scale from zero to one. So if you want to get like really specific, like make a orangey color or something you gotta use decimals but here i just did zero comma one comma zero to do green because zero for the other values you can't make them red or green red or blue in any way but green and the green value and the name I, the name is the name of the part so say i named this part to like i don't know like i'm just gonna smash my keyboard like that and now in the explorer is 
as I said as <laughs> anyways. Yeah, and for this we use a string value. So a string value, you can't really register normal letters unless it's some sort of like variable or something. And we'll get then get to that in the next episode. And so a string value is like you have to put quotation marks around it, or else it'll like not register as like a string. A string is is like a letter is like a letter value. Yeah, that's that's basically it. And size, we use a vector three value. So this could be used for size, position, orient, like orientation, like all that good stuff. And I just did four, 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 four studs bit, four studs long, four studs wide, and then four studs high, I guess. And brick color, I use a brick color. This is specifically for the brick color. You use a brick color dot new value. And I added a string value inside of the parentheses. And it's really red, and I added in a really red value. Like, there's a lot of stuff you could choose in here. So, let's say I put like Lauren Green, and I want to change it to like Laure Laurel Green. I type in Laurel Green in here. And the anchor, so the anchor uses a Boolean value. So, this value only depends on true or false. So, if it's true, so if the anchored is true, it's anchored. But if it's false, then it's not anchored. Yeah, you get the point. Okay, let me j just change it back to black. I like black. And now let's see what crazy stuff happens to this part. Okay, let's press play. And once you're in the game, oh, this part is crazy. Like it's sticking into the base plate or something. I can't even see the entire part. Yeah, you get the point. It's turned red. Yeah, all that stuff. And if you see any errors, let me just move my webcam. Yeah, so you can see my face in the center. Yeah, my face is literally just like in my avatar face. That's kind of cool. If you see any errors in the output, and you better have that out because go to view and click on output if you don't have it on. And the output, like, it just says, like, what what's happening in the game. Like, if, if you, like, type in some code wrong, it'll say, like, an error or something. Oh, by the way, guys, I want to show you something, some other thing. So, so there's this thing called printing. So, print, so if you type in print, and if you want to do a string value, you just type in, I don't know, like, hello world, like the last default code. Or if you want, just want to type in some numbers, you don't have to type in the quotation marks, but if you want to, a lot, if you want to, like, type in some some sort of, like, numbers with the, with the letters, then you have to use the quotation marks. Yeah, it just works that way. It just, yeah, do one, two, three, four, one, two, four. Okay, and let's just stop and press play again. And printing is really helpful for debugging and that kind of stuff. So if you like do it, if you do some, if you do some sort of code, and you click, yeah, see, it prints one, two, three, four, one, two, four. So basically, printing just prints some stuff in the output. And yeah, printing is not that helpful, but it, I think it was used to be used for like debugging and that kind of stuff. I don't know if it's really useful now because it just says like the lines on which is debugging. Yeah, but it can be good for like the de debugging errors that don't show up in the output. Anyways, if you thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. If you're still confused on what I was talking about and all that stuff, go go type in the comments like what you have some problems with, and I'll be happy to help you out. Like I don't have a lot of subscribers yet, so I just happen to focus on every one of my comments that are like important or like positive, not just want. Just like, not like one of those random comments. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching this video. I, I'll be posting videos every week, like every Thursday. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.